Welcome to NFL Football Fans. That time again, time for another edition of NFL Football Talk. I'm your host, Charles E. Smith Jr. This is an Inside Sports production presented to you by Humanican Media. And hey, the Kansas City Chiefs have fallen from the ranks of the unbeaten. And right now, as we do this show here, this is on Thursday. I believe they're putting the finishing touches on the Oakland Raiders, who were in the process of imploding after a good start and sending themselves to a fifth straight loss, I believe. But that game is still in progress right now. Hopefully, when I bring on my co-host, he can give us a uh, a good uh, update on that. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and introduce my main man, the co-host. By the way, many of you follow him on Twitter, at Chris L Sports. And if not, you really should be. He is the pride of Rutgers University. None other than my favorite East Coast intellectual, Chris Lardieri. Chris, what's up out there, man? Charles, outstanding introduction as always. Thanks, much appreciated. Uh, last report, the Raiders are still hanging in there. It's Chiefs 30, Oakland 24. Uh, so there's some signs of life uh, in Oaktown, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, there we go. So, hey, you know, uh, the Chiefs, they they lost to the Steelers unexpectedly last week. But a lot of uh, – last week, week six, just uh, a really head-scratching weekend. I mean, how in the world did your New York Giants – beat they lost all their receivers a week before and then they beat a defense like the broncos and beat the broncos what happened i didn't think that was possible uh you know it's the great don henley once saying the more i know the less i understand and that was last week in the nfl for years truly i don't know i got a lot of uh texts and calls from friends wondering what the heck happened i thought maybe there was a mistake when the score was reported but uh just goes to show you that uh in this league, there's no dominant team. Anything can happen. And uh, kids, don't gamble. Uh, I mean, you know, I do it when I uh, cross state lines and go into Nevada where it's legal. But uh, you, know, you try and figure this stuff out. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. If you do, like we say, Chris and I, we both place the occasional bet. But trust me, it's only for fun. Uh, Chris never goes to Las Vegas hoping to win enough to make his next mortgage payment. And I never go to Las Vegas hoping to win enough to make my next uh, rent check. You know, it's just uh, do it for fun. If you can't afford it, don't do it. If you've got a little extra cash, go ahead and have some fun. You got to insert the after school special music now, Charles. Great PSA. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, hey, you know, the other thing is, is we saw the uh, continued uh, great play of the New Orleans Saints. Uh, they're still going along, still running the balanced offense. I mean, Breeze is still hitting the occasional long pass, but it looks like they're finally running that more balanced offense, getting into running. That was the effect of Adrian Peterson kind of being in the fold, even though they traded him away. But they continued on their winning ways. That's their third straight win. And also, Adrian Peterson goes to Arizona and just tears it up. I mean, what do you have? I think 150-plus yards. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happens with the older people like us, Charles. We go to Arizona, right, and then we prosper there. But uh, in all seriousness, Mark Ingram and Adrian Peterson have clearly benefited from that. Uh, they're both the number one men on their respective teams, and uh, you know, it looks like Adrian does have some gas left in the tank. Um, I guess Sean Payton really didn't think he had it, but uh, you know, Bruce Arians likes kind of the older guys and giving them a second chance. So I think it's a good fit for them there, uh, especially given Andre Ellington was in getting the job ever yeah, see with the saints you know they knocked my uh unbeaten gamblers delight streak they ended it last week beating up on the lions and who would have thought the saints defense which has been their achilles heel really brought it last week and uh, it's been keeping this team in games throughout the season so props to them i know they've uh made some good draft picks on that side of the ball and it looks like it's starting to pay off on what's uh, a winnable nfc south yeah, that's true. And, uh, you know, just stay tuned. Uh, NFC South and also the AFC South, you know, becoming very interesting there with the, uh, with the Houston Texans, with Jacksonville, you know, with their whole win-loss, 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 win-loss thing. And who knows, maybe they'll win two in a row at some point and wind up finishing the season at nine and seven and be in it to the last day. Yeah, it's a classic up-down, up-down. I should have listened to you last week when I didn't pick the Rams. <laughs> Okay, and then, well, what's the uh, the other thing here? Ezekiel Elliott. Now, it all depends on when you do a football show because had we done it earlier in the week, we had been talking about how the Cowboys are getting along without Elliott. Now we're doing it. We're talking about what they're going to be doing with Elliott. So the NFL, which already the contracts that they sign are not even worth the paper they're written on, 
Now the suspensions are not even worth the uh, paper they're written on. What's what's going on there? No, no, I'm just waiting for Law and Order NFL to debut on NBC because that's what it's become. The lawyers, judges, uh, appeals, court battles. I really can't keep track of it. I'm kind of tired of it already. Um, I think the 2000 uh, presidential election had uh, less wrangling with lawyers and judges, but uh, I, I agree. I don't know what to think. I mean, a lot of people in fantasy football went out there and picked up Darren McFadden uh, thinking that Elliot was going to be suspended, and uh, now they're stuck with someone that will sit on their bench. So you know, um, don't know what to make of it. There's a very good chance this could drag on, and much like Tom Brady, if he does serve a suspension, will be in the subsequent year. Yeah. So for those of you maybe not in the know, if you uh, live under a rock or something, Ezekiel Elliott was handed down a six-week suspension. Uh, he went to court, got an injunction. The NFL goes in, they get that lifted, and then suspension gets reinstated. Then he goes back, files another motion, and now it is suppressed yet again. So he's playing for the Cowboys for the foreseeable future. Not that it really matters because of the Cowboys. Let's face it, Mr. Lardieri, the Cowboys – in the NFC and the Oakland Raiders in the AFC, two of the more disappointing franchises still this year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, really, I'm, I'm not as surprised by Dallas. I kind of thought they'd come back to reality, but I didn't think they'd struggle this much this early in the season. But Raiders especially, like you said, if they lose again in this losing streak, it could be in a complete tailspin. Um, Marshawn Lynch, frankly, has looked like a bust. And uh, the Raiders defense is getting absolutely torched this season. That's the real problem. So, um, yeah, this is a completely wide open NFL. I don't think there's a team out there you could say is a favorite, even Kansas City, which we saw look pretty human last week. They did. And then, uh, you know, even the Atlanta Falcons, uh, what about blowing a state a 17 to nothing lead over the Miami Dolphins, my Miami Dolphins, this past week? And hey, the Dolphins come all the way back. You know, 20 unanswered points, and they intercept Matty Ice in the red zone to, to seal victory. So this is the year, the first team, and I, I think really it has to be and from the AFC, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they have got to go all in. Get to the Super Bowl this year, period. There's, there's no excuse for it. They, they've beaten Kansas City. Uh, New England keeps on proving they're just mediocre. I think medi uh, Oakland, excuse me, New England, without Tom Brady at the helm, you know, they're really just an 8-8 eight and eight team, a very average team. I think they'll wind up probably being 11-5, and five, maybe 10-6 and six at the end of the year because of Brady, but they're very beatable. Pittsburgh has the talent. They need to go all in this year to get to the Super Bowl. Definitely, and, and look, the, the Patriots are extremely vulnerable on defense, and the Steelers do have a quality offense. We saw Le'Veon Bell looks like he's out of training camp mode and looks like a a man on a mission now. Antonio Brown got a touchdown. Everyone's happy again. No more tantrums. But uh, I like the way the Steelers play D. And uh, look, let's uh, we, we got to kind of give a shout out to Andy Reid again with his questionable calls, going for a touchdown instead of kicking a field goal with plenty of time left in the fourth. Clock management timeouts. When push comes to shove, Charles, we've been saying this for years. Andy Reid will revert to his personal mean and screw something up. So just a hint of things to come in January, even if the Chiefs are a one seed. You've always got to wonder about good old Andy. Yeah, that's true. And then, you know, something, even though it was uh, last week, we're already into week seven now, but uh, the way that last week's Thursday night game played out with uh, Carolina, and I don't get it with their, you know, they're down by five points. They got the ball at midfield, just under four minutes to play. And Cam just takes three shots at the end zone, and, and that's it. Where's the, we talk about clock management, but even if he does get one of those Hail Marys, which was unnecessary, do we really think that Carson Wentz is not just going to drive the, uh, the Eagles into field goal range and win the game with, what, with 10 seconds left on the clock? I just don't understand. There was a desperation there that didn't need to be. They could have just worked the ball down the field and run all the time off the clock and then score the game-winning touchdown. Yeah, made absolute zero sense. And uh, you can't even blame it on the kicker because Graham Gano kicked a, a game winner against the Patriots a few weeks ago, so he's not the issue. Yeah, I, I really don't understand. Do teams not have faith in defense? Uh, do coaches just kind of panic or black out at that point in the game? Look, kids out there, I've got a career for you. I want you to be a clock and or situational consultant for an NFL team. You can sit in a booth. You can talk in a headset to a head coach or offensive coordinator. Whenever they get that glazed over look in their eyes, you tell them, no, don't burn a timeout here. No, we don't just chip away. Yeah, kind of like Tony Romo's style as a uh, 
color commentator in the NFL, which I like, by the way. I'm right. been on record as not being a fan of Romo, the quarterback, but I, I like how he breaks down situations. He was kind of critical of the Buccaneers a few weeks ago on Thursday Night Football for their clock management and some of the plays they called. That's the way you need to think. Think like a quarterback. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, uh, the other thing is we got to remember that Luke Keekley had been knocked out of the game for Carolina, too. So the Eagles would have been driving against an, a uh, Panthers defense that's missing the mainstay right there in the middle. But let's, let's not belabor that point. Now, something I want to make here, I did see this on another show uh, on that four-letter network. I didn't get this by myself here. But uh, the Cleveland Browns. Now, we know they've had 28 starting quarterbacks ever since they were resurrected as a franchise in uh, 1999. Here are the quarterbacks they passed on who were available in the draft and they did not take. Okay, 1999, Donovan McNabb. 2004, Ben Roethlisberger. 2005, Aaron Rodgers. 2014, Teddy Bridgewater. 2014, Derek Carr. 2016 Carson Wentz and then just this past season they came oh so close they could have had Deshaun Watson they took Deshaun Kaiser instead that is just brutal and that's the Cleveland Browns in a nutshell yeah especially infuriating if you're a Browns fan it has to be the after the game uh Watson claimed that coach Hugh Jackson texted him intimating that they were going to select them so I don't know if maybe Paul D. Podesta's money ball uh algorithm or whatever overrode him but that made no sense to me whatsoever but yeah you uh, I don't know I, I think in a way that the Cleveland front office is kind of like George Costanza of Seinfeld fame you know, there was that one episode where George would make a decision and he was so bad at making decisions he figured well I'll just do the opposite and things started going right for him I think they need to take that approach forget money ball yeah, there we go. Okay, so as you know, it's not just uh, the football talk here, but we do break down. Uh, we give her a picks for the week, and then we do a gambler's delight special, as we call it, and also some fantasy football advice. We're about to get into those segments, but always want a little bit of uh, Mr. Lardieri's wisdom. Uh, Chris, what's on your mind this week? You know, uh, the same theme repeats itself every year. You've got injuries in the NFL. We, we're not going to belabor the point. However, this has been a really bad year in terms of stars. You've had OBJ, JJ Watt, and now Aaron Rodgers going down. And some people say it wasn't a illegal hit by Anthony Barr. Maybe it was a little excessive, but regardless, you know, when you have the top talent in the league, in a league that's kind of seen declining ratings, going down or missing a whole season, and you know, like we say, the gamblers and the fantasy football fans aren't going to be happy either. But uh, you've got Andrew Luck now. It's come out this week. Right. Maybe shut him down for the whole year, which. By the way, probably isn't a bad move long term for his career. But uh, you know, you, you look at a lot of the mediocrity, especially last week in the league, and that's why you know you've got stars out. The quarterback play is subpar. Um, while it's great to see a Deshaun Watson, I mean, you look at the mess in Cleveland. Uh, you look at Jay Cutler from your team. I mean, some of this is just hard to watch. So something to keep your eye on. I mean, you really can't prevent injuries, but. Uh, nothing's going right for the league in that respect in terms of marquee players going down and uh, ultimately you're seeing a bunch of backups playing. That that Broncos-Giants game, I mean, great that the Giants won, but uh, it was really unwatchable unless you're an Orleans Darkwa fan. Yeah, interesting your banner went down right when oh, you Oh, look at that, symbolic. Collapse last week. <laughs> we'll go ahead and let you uh, – Get those repairs done back there while we bring in the next segment. Now, what we right. do every week, we do uh, give you the – we pick five of the more intriguing matchups of the week and uh, give you our picks and predictions on those. So, for the season, I'm at 23-7. and seven. Now, Chris and I were neck and neck before last week. He's now at 17-13. We differed on every pick, and I was hoping, honestly, to get just a couple of them right. I went 5-0. and oh. Chris went 0-5. Oh hey, it happens. I'm not even going to hate on him or anything like that because I know it's just the other side of the coin. And then after the picks, we're going to get into the Gambler's Delight pick. And then for you uh, fantasy football players out there, we're going to go ahead and uh, give you some fantasy football advice. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, Mr. Lardieri, would you like to uh, break down the first game for us, which features two marquee running backs? Sure. The uh, next in the UK series of NFL games, the Cardinals – uh, travel to play the quote-unquote host Rams. The Cardinals are three-and-a-half-point underdogs. Um, you may not have noticed this. You look at it on the schedule. You see a West Coast start time of 10 a.m. 
when it says at the Rams, don't be fooled. It's in London. I've heard some hosts uh, claim this was a Rams home game. They didn't do their homework, but I digress. Um, look, I, it's nice to see the Cardinals have a running game again, and they got Adrian Peterson going. But uh, ultimately, uh, look, I, I like the way the, the Rams have been playing. I, I think what is going to lead me to pick the uh, – team with the white helmets and the gold numbers that I can't figure out why, is the fact that the, the Rams played in Jacksonville and then went directly to London. And you've got the Cardinals at a home game in London. They're traveling a lot further. The Rams played a London game there last year. They lost a clunker to the Giants. Um, I like the way just in general Jared Goff's playing, Todd Gurley's running the ball. The defense looks like it's starting to come around. I'm just going to purely make this a jet lag pick and say the Rams win this game. <laughs> There you go. You know, you threw a lot of algorithm in there, man. I like that. Yeah, uh, thanks. <laughs> here's what I see is, really, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to agree with you here, but I think it's with the Rams with a uh, quicker defense and Carson Palmer with uh, slower feet. I think it's going to be up to Adrian Peterson to have a, a monster day here if the Cardinals are going to have a chance. But in the end, I like uh, the maturing Rams offense. I love the way that Todd Gurley is running. I love what Jared, Gro Jared Goff is doing. And Sammy Watkins has to wake up at some point. Or I wouldn't even say wake up, but he and Goff have to get on the same page. When that happens, this offense is going to take a quantum leap, and that may be this week. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Rams as well. I second that. I have Watkins on my fantasy team, and other than the 49ers game, he's been in witness protection at times. Yeah. There you go. So the next game we're going to, I believe the first time we're going to uh, choose a game with my Miami Dolphins. The New York Jets are going to be in Miami to take on the Dolphins. Uh, the Jets are getting three points there in Miami. The Jets, they, they sh really, they kind of, they should have beaten uh, New England last week. I don't know how really they had that touchdown taken away from them when they had it taken away. But, hey, that's just New York Jets type of a luck here. So... Uh, Jets in Miami. This should be a it'll be a close game, albeit imperfect. But you know, I'm gonna. And Miami had the big win against Atlanta. This is a hard one to pick because we really don't know what team is gonna show up uh, when these when these teams get together here. But I'm gonna go ahead and go with uh, with Miami by the narrowest of margins. I don't know if I'd take them against the point spread or not, but I'm gonna go with them to win the game somehow outright. Uh, Chris, what do you think? Um, I don't know why, but I'm going to disagree with you. I like the way the Jets are playing, even on defense. You know, they've lost Sheldon Richardson. They've got a, got some young guys in the secondary. But uh, at the end of the day, that game was winnable last week, and people can debate whether the NFL office gave a makeup call to the Patriots on that controversial uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins alleged touchdown. But uh, I like the way Josh McCown's playing. I mean, this guy's bounced around in the league, and look, he's uh, – He's not playing like an MVP, but he's really playing a lot better. Um, I think that uh, the Jets are really happy to have him compared to what they had last year and the way Christian Hackenberg looked. And I uh, think this could be your typical ugly defensive struggling slugfest. But uh, for whatever reason, the Jets seem to have some momentum going here. They're not about to throw in the towel and just tank it for the number one pick. And I think they win. Well, the Jets, you know, they had a three-game win streak going into – into the game against uh, the Patriots, and really, for all intents and purposes, they, they could have won that game, had a 14 to nothing lead. So I understand exactly why you're picking the Jets. In fact, this was pretty much a coin toss. I'm just going with the Dolphins because I love aqua and orange. That's really pretty much it. You know? Funny you mentioned coin toss. I would have done better with my picks last week had I pulled a quarter out of my pocket. <laughs> okay. And why don't you break down the next one for us there, homie? Yeah, an AFC North showdown, the uh, Cincinnati Bengals uh, get themselves a new offensive coordinator, and it looks like uh, Andy Dalton and A.J. Green are on the same page again. They are getting five points heading into Pittsburgh, Heinz Field. Uh, we know these teams don't like each other. We saw it in the playoffs a few years ago when they play in the regular season. It turns into a slugfest. Uh, by no means do I think uh, this will be lopsided in any way. This series always tends to go back and forth. But, however, I like the Steelers. Like I, we had talked about earlier, Le'Veon Bell really looks like the motor's running, and he's gotten out of neutral. And, uh, you know, Roethlisberger didn't throw five interceptions. He managed the game well, even though it wasn't a high-scoring game. And that, uh, that Steelers' D seems to be clicking. So uh, I think on the home field, the Steelers get the win. 
Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of talent, as you say, on that Steelers team. And like we talked about at the Open, the Steelers at some point have to go all in and just say we're going to the Super Bowl this year. It's got to be Super Bowl or bust. And I think with the uh, win over Kansas City last week, even though it was the – well, the Steelers dominated. They just had trouble getting into the end zone. So it's need to – the critical football, the situational football is what needs to get cleaned up. I just hope that they can get out of this without having a major star injured by, injured by that uh, – that, dirty uh, Cincinnati Bengals defense. So I'm going to take the Steelers to win the game. And uh, I just hope they get out of it without, without any injuries. That's what it comes down to. They've lost Antonio Brown against them before. They've lost Le'Veon Bell against uh, the Bengals before. And in victories, you know. So uh, that's what it comes down to. Definitely. Okay, so we're both going to go with Pittsburgh there. And then uh, Super Bowl rematch. Sunday night football, Atlanta Falcons in New England to take on the Patriots. And, uh, you know, the Falcons can just hope they don't have a 23-point, 25-point lead going into the fourth quarter in this one. They might be able to hold, uh, hold off the Patriots this time. Atlanta, they're a three-and-a-half-point underdog. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going with Atlanta in this game. I just – I don't think New England is – they're just not that strong a team. And with the potent offense of the Falcons – uh, I just don't think that Atlanta, or excuse me, New England is going to be able to score with them and keep up with them. They just got to make sure they don't get dragged into playing ugly ball and they'll be okay. I'm going Falcons here. Yeah, I'm actually going to agree with you. You know, a lot of people are down on the Falcons. Uh, why Julio Jones hasn't been more involved in the offense, questioning Matty Ice. But uh, this is the recipe they need for success, that Patriots D. And for whatever reason this season, the Pats don't seem to like playing at home. I think they're vulnerable. I think uh, the the ball gets distributed around a little more this week. Uh, you know, Miami definitely played a good defensive game, but uh, this is a porous, porous New England defense. I think they get back on the right track. And look, frankly, Julian Edelman's out there to make a remarkable catch for the Patriots. So at the end of the day, I'm going with the birds. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and uh, go ahead and break down the last one, which is maybe not quite a scintillating a matchup, but a good uh, old school division rivalry. Monday. Yeah, Monday Night Football. Uh, John Gruden gets to talk about his uh, his brother Jay again, or rather he doesn't get to criticize him. But I digress. The Redskins uh, go into Philly. They're getting four and a half points. And, uh, you know, it is on a side note, nice to see some decent Monday night matchups compared to previous years. Uh, at least they're watchable this year. And uh, look, the, uh, the Redskins kind of struggled, but they pulled out a victory against the, the 49ers last week, a team that, despite its record, really hangs around and plays tough and battles. The Eagles seem to be on a roll. They're coming off a, a 10 days of rest after a, a big win down in Carolina. It looks like the Eagles are in the driver's seat to win this division, and it's their second matchup. They already beat them in opening weekend. I think if they pull away, they could really distance themselves with a victory here. I think they do, and I really like the way Carson Wentz is playing. He's really matured in his second year, and you could see he really grasped that pro-style offense. Um, other thing, too, is I don't know what is going on with Kirk Cousins and his receivers. Jamison Crowder really just has kind of fallen off his radar. Uh, Terrell Pryor looks like a wasted signing. And uh, because of that, I'm not, not thrilled with the Washington offense. I'm going with the Eagles. Yeah, and you know what? I got to agree with you, too. And uh, the main thing is the reason why I picked them actually last week against, uh, against Carolina was because I like the way that Carson Wentz plays in big moments. And this is definitely a big moment here. Like you talk about the chance to uh, take control of the of the division, and hey, you know, put Washington down to a to a 500 record. The the, uh, the Eagles would move to six and one, and definitely be in the driver's seat. And we got Dallas kind of fading. We got the Giants who are what are they one and five now? So they got to win this game. This is a must win. It's at home. I love Carson Wentz, and uh, yeah, going with the Eagles as well. I like it. Okay, so there's the. The picks, those are the five, as we see them, the more intriguing matchups. All right, people. So there we go, the picks of the week, the Gambler's Delight picks of the week. And one segment left, and I got to go ahead and turn it over because I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big player in this, this particular arena here, but I've got someone who is, Mr. Lardieri, all those years of experience uh, watching, playing, and you are – a fantasy football guru. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you right now. Fantasy football advice, everybody. Get your pen and paper out and listen closely. 
Oh, thank you. You know, I may have lost uh, my gambler's delight pick last week, but I'm happy to report I'm 6-0 in fantasy football. This seems surreal. I'm just waiting for the other shoe to fall or a major injury. Knock on wood, my team hasn't suffered any. Uh, theme this week is bye weeks, and not just this week. I believe only the Lions and the Texans are off. The next two weeks, there are a number of teams off, and you're going to need to look for a quarterback, perhaps a, uh, a defense to stream or even a running back. Pay attention. Look on the waiver wire now because when it comes to the next two weeks, it's going to be a, a wild, wild west in free agency, and people are going to be outbidding for the most mediocre quarterback. I'm going to throw a couple names out there for you. If Tyrod Taylor is available, get him. He's probably not in the deeper leagues. I'm sure teams have probably already picked him up, stash him on the bench for bye weeks like this. But uh, if he is, you know, not a great quarterback, but what he does, he'll get you some running yards. He may throw you a couple touchdowns. Heck, he may even run one in, which is valuable. If you've got to go really deep, look, you've got Aaron Rodgers. What do I do now? Is my only quarterback or my backup stinks? If you have, if you really get desperate, go out there, pick up Brett Hundley, his replacement. I'm not saying he's going to be the next Kurt Warner, but what will happen is Mike McCarthy's good with quarterbacks. He's going to modify the offense. He's going to simplify it. What you saw last week was a guy just thrown into the fire. Don't pay any attention to that against a quality Vikings defense. Um, there are worse guys you can get. You need another one. Look at the Vikings. There's actually two guys. People don't realize this. You know, Case Keenum's had a nice season. Steady. He'll get you, you know, 12 to 15 points, it looks like, when he's playing well. But uh, keep an eye on Teddy Bridgewater. He's had a miraculous recovery, recovery from uh, a knee injury that was so severe they thought his leg was going to be amputated, and he, he is activated. Um, may not need him now, but down the road, if Keenum starts faltering, maybe an eye, a good guy to keep your eye on. Because let's face it, this guy was the future of the franchise before he got hurt. Um, another guy to look at, too, there's Jacoby Brissett in, in Indianapolis. He struggled on Monday night, but longer term, it looks like if, if Andrew Luck is going to be shut down for the season, that's another guy you can at least stash on the bench, use as a backup, as a bye week fill-in. A couple other positions people don't really think about. With uh, running back, I know Orleans Dark was going to be a very popular pick this week. That's great as a Giants fan. I think he's a starter right now, but don't pin all your hopes on him week after week. Who knows if the Giants will continue to run the ball. Let's look at kicker and defense. A couple of weeks ago, I went out and picked up uh, Harrison Butker of the Chiefs. And as of uh, the time we started our show tonight, I think he had 14 points. I really like him. I think he's a, a, a good guy you could plug into your lineup. Uh, inevitably, we know An uh, Alex Smith is going to struggle, and the Chiefs will probably have a lot of opportunities to kick field goals. So there's one to kind of grab if you need a bye week fill-in or even if your kickers just kind of hit a wall. And then uh, you need to pick up a defense this week. There's a couple you could stream. Carolina is coming off 10 days off. I know they miss Keekley, but they play the Bears and a rookie quarterback in Trubisky. That could be potential turnover city there. And then the Saints, as we mentioned earlier, you know, going up against Brett Hundley. Um, look, they had a couple pick sixes last week, I believe, or was it one pick six and a fumble? They had a ton of points for a, a fantasy defense, unheard of. And it looks like they're really playing well on that side of the ball. And then a uh, team I like on defense, they may even be out there st still as the Steelers. They're not lights out with points, but they're consistently getting, say, eight, nine, ten points per week. And in fantasy football, that's all you can ask for from their D. So uh, I know this show's later in the week. I wasn't going to bore you with too much of the waiver talk because that's come and gone, but – Think strategically looking forward to the next two weeks. You don't want to give away two weeks a game just because you've got a lot of players on by. You can squeak out a cheap victory and gain momentum for the playoffs. All right. Very good. Okay, so there you go. We've got everything. Uh, latest NFL news, uh, the picks of the week, the Gambler's Delight special, and there's some fantastic fantasy football advice. And remember, every single week right here, the show is NFL Football Talk Inside Sports Production. I'm Charles E. Smith, Jr. Over on the other side there is Mr. Chris Lardieri. And before we sign off and get ready to uh, get a few good nights sleep before we wake up for this uh, fantastic Sunday of football, uh, Chris, final thoughts for us? Yeah, this is more of an observation I had watching Adrian Peterson and realizing he was going to be playing uh, across the pond, as they say, this week. Someone needs to look into this, but I'm wondering if Adrian Peterson is the first NFL player to play two games in England in the same season. You know, the Saints right. played the Dolphins earlier this year. I didn't hear that anywhere. So I guess that's some sort of nerd football trivia. If anyone wants to let me know if that's covered this and I can go on Sports Jeopardy or whatever the case is. Uh, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my final thought for the week there. Don't, 
don't ask me how it dawned upon me, but uh, you know, it's better than talking about NFL owners meetings and judicial proceedings, I guess. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, I think just with the whole thing of the players kneeling, what they should do is just go back to they were, where they were in 2009 and just have them all wait in the locker room before the, before the national anthem and then come out after the national anthem is played like they used to. If they all want to kneel in the locker room, that's fine. They can do that. But, you know, I'm also reminded with uh, players kneeling and with all the – the hurricanes and now with the uh, me too stuff on uh, on social media are we still scared of that chubby little korean fella is he still going to blow up the world or have we all forgotten about that and that'll be uh, something we pick up again in a few more weeks are we are we still afraid of that guy or i, I can't remember well i'm still paying attention charles and yeah living here in california we know we're the first one to get one of his missile shots but uh yeah you know it's it's classic it's uh use the nfl and the flag and whatever else is a distraction uh the kardashians what else can we talk about uh yeah but you know in, in all seriousness i think with uh with the the tragic shootings in las vegas and these horrible uh, fires in northern california i think people have gotten distracted with that and if anything um you know it's kind of kept the tempo a little bit down with the whole kneeling and flag issues and whatnot. And look, um, you know, it's a little bit tongue in cheek. I happen to think the guy's a dirt bag, but it's, it's good to see Ezekiel Elliott back in the news, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. And by the way, just to set a little, some of your minds at ease, uh, the longest range uh, intercontinental ballistic missile cannot fly all the way from Korea to the uh, United States mainland. So just remember, he would have to come halfway across the ocean and then launch it from there in order for it to hit the mainland. So there you go. And you can Google that, too, and let me know if I'm wrong about that. But uh, how did Charles Barkley say? I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Was that what he said? <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, remember every single week right here, NFL Football Talk for Mr. Chris Lardieri. I'm Charles E. Smith, Jr. Enjoy the games, and we'll see everybody next week. Brink here from Super BS, talking about the things you know you love and the things you'd love to know. Join us weekly for a podcast about video games. Mostly. Oh, yeah. To, to us people that can feel things, it, it, uh, it hurts.